Good morning and welcome to Sunup. I'm Dave Deacon filling in for Lindell Stout this week and we are talking canola harvest with Josh Bouchong. How is the crop progressing? Well, uh, the crop's progressing just fine. A lot of guys are able to get their crop harvested this week. Uh, some guys that we've been waiting to get in the fields because it's been so muddy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of those good problems to have, I guess. Uh, some guys are facing a few issues still. Uh, we've had some green seed content issues. Uh, we're only allowed 2% at the elevator, so uh, some guys that desiccated too early or maybe swathed too early. Uh, we were seeing some issues with the green count. Uh, we've seen some sprouting issues where the seed started sprouting in the pod. Uh, a lot of that goes back to the stress conditions and the overall all the rain we got. So, uh, But for the most part, harvest has been going pretty well. It's been picking up last uh, several days. Uh, as the crop started to dry down, uh, yields have been uh, pretty remarkable for what we've been through this year. Uh, we've had some guys in southwest Oklahoma getting 40 to 50 bushels. Uh, a lot of guys are in that upper teens to low 20s, but uh, we are finding several fields out there that are surprising us. Uh, some fields that we thought were maybe around that 20 bushel mark are making 40, 45 bushels. So uh, once again, the crop surprises us uh, and this year for the better. but. Uh, we're still getting some fields out and we still have a couple weeks left uh, to get all the crop off. Let's take a look up, or, or, let's take a look back at this year's crop. It, it, we, we, we didn't have the big freezes that we had in previous years, but there were, still were a couple of issues that came up. Yeah, uh, some areas of the state, north central Oklahoma in particular, uh, we were drought stress dormant. Uh, so we didn't break dormancy until uh, fairly late. So some of, these, some of these crops didn't start flowering until real late. Uh, some of those fields took advantage of those late uh, rains we got this year. Uh, like you said, we didn't really have any freezes in April, so that didn't really hinder the crop. Uh, so for the most part, we had a good pod set. Uh, we didn't skip on any pods. And for the most part, we've had good seed set. We've had fairly mild temperatures when we're setting those seeds and good moisture when we're filling those seeds. So we have pretty good seed size this year and all that kind of contributes to the yields we're seeing. What were the planted acres like in the, this, this crop? Uh, this year we're a little bit low. Uh, that kind of goes back to the grim look we had at planting time. Uh, we we're extremely dry and the planting window we just didn't have enough time. So acres are a little bit down this year. Uh, we're thinking somewhere around 165,000 acres for Oklahoma. Uh, last year is almost 250,000 acres. So looking into next year um, we're going to see some things influence those acres. Uh, one obviously be the price of canola. The commodity prices right now are starting to rebound. Uh, one would be crop insurance, whether or not they have favorable crop insurance, and two, planting conditions. Like I said, this past year, that was our biggest hindrance on the canola acres. We were just too dry. If we continue to get some good rains up to August and get some good soil profile built up on uh, moisture uh, and have some decent planting uh, days in late September, we're going to see those acres come right back. Well, much like we just got here while we're shooting, those timely rainfalls kind of helped the crop this year. Yeah, uh, it kind of stayed more or less semi-dormant until it got that rainfall. Uh, canola being an indeterminate crop has the capability to rebound once it gets more favorable growing conditions. And this it, uh, this year is moisture, obviously. So once we started getting those rains, that crop really responded quite well. Uh, so looking at that next year, uh, we're going to review a lot of uh, these issues we faced this year at our annual uh, winter canola conference. Uh, this year it's going to be July 14th in Enid, and then the second one will be in Vernon, Texas on July 15th. Uh, so we're just south of the Red River this year, but both uh, meetings are going to be uh, very similar. So uh, any producer who wants to go to either one of those is more than welcome. And we're going to share a lot of information on what we learned on research, what we learned on farm trials, uh, and anything else we can pass on to the producer. So. Okay, thank you much, Josh Bouchong, and we'll be checking in with you a little bit later to see how the final crop works out. And you can find a link to that conference on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.